whether it is real or fictional, has three parts. Somebody wants something. Obstacles in their way and the things they do to get it anyway. So, the things that people want, that's their strategic intent. The obstacles is their embodied reality. Right? And all the things they do to try and get it is the actions they take, that's them living through the story or making up stories about why it didn't work last time or how it's going to work in the future, right? That's the narrative. The interaction between what we want and what we have is our story. Strategic narrative embodiment. Now, most of the time, when we talk about theater or drama in organizational spaces, people think about industrial theater. And industrial theater is a way in which management want to message to the workers. So it's a top-down communication process. A very effective one at that, but it's top-down. The other way in which people think about it is presentation skills or acting skills or maybe storytelling abilities for leaders, which is still a way in which theater and drama then support top-down communication. But the applied drama and applied improvisation processes are designed for two-way communication or maybe multiple-way communication within the dynamic of a complex system. And how this then works as a methodology is we start by clarifying the strategic intent of all the stakeholders around a particular issue. The strategic intent is the starting point and it's also the, the frame that keeps all the activity within relevant. The activity within starts by inviting people's stories about why they don't have what they want or how they're going to get it or how they failed last time into the space. We invite those stories in and then we take them on a new journey that can help them interact with those stories. And because we don't have a dominant narrative or a pre-designed narrative of management feeding into this, we want people to take part in the meaning making, in the restoring, in the story making. And we do that through embodied participation. Right. So this is narrative design and this is embodied participation. When these two meet, the dominant stories or our habitual stories about things get fractured or, or, or nuanced so that we can see a new emergent story or potential stories from come out of this process. And this doesn't mean that we, not, we don't value the other stories or that we say they're not true. The, the story is about context. So as an example, people blame their boss who is too domineering or their, their colleagues who are too lazy or the system that is too in, unequal or colonized or they blame themselves for being too female or too black or too uh, introverted. And all of those stories come into the room and we're saying those are valid stories, but they're not necessarily useful for you to be empowered to get more of what you want or want more of what you have. So that's why we're looking for alternatives, alternatives that will, that will give us more things to do as we live through our story and get what we want closer to what we have or have more of what we want. Strategic. Narrative embodiment. Yeah. <laughs>